First of all, as I said, my presentation is all going to be about winning the game of digital loyalty, how to see your customers returning more often, spending more, growing revenue when everyone is still shopping on Amazon. So I want to try and hopefully within this presentation, I've been involved in the loyalty space for probably about 12 years now. Um, so the three things I pr probably want to try and get across to you are, by the end of this presentation, is educating you a little bit on customer loyalty, why it's important to you. Give you some food for thought in terms of something to take away um, from the end of the presentation. And I'm going to try and do a practical live example at the end on chatbots, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but as I said, every single business in here is different. I don't know the makeup of the audience. Swipe A, as you'll see in a minute, we do digital loyalty one way. Uh, everybody else will do it differently. So I'll try and keep it quite broad. Happy to take questions on how it could apply to your business uh, later on. So. The three things I'm going to cover off in this presentation would be secret number one, the need, you can tell I'm a marketer, I use secrets and how to's. And, um, secret number one, the need for customer data, um, how to collect customer data using digital channels and why it's the lifeblood of your business for boosting customer loyalty. Secondly, I'll talk about segmentation, personalization and monetization. Um, how, so how you can actually digitally segment your customers, personalise your market messages so customers return more often and actually spend more. And the last one, um, getting started with chatbots, um, how to use chatbots to drive digital loyalty in your business and how to, you can get started in less than 10 minutes without paying a single penny. So as I said, very marketing. So my background <coughs> or my epiphany, I suppose if you want to call it in terms of where power of digital loyalty first came in for me was back in 2005. Um, I had a small gents grooming business, um, for anybody who knows Princess Square in Glasgow, it was just in a, like a small kiosk on the first floor. I um, had that business for five years. During that time, um, me and Tom hung out, no we didn't. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was fortunate enough to get nominated for a UK Entrepreneur of the Year award uh, back in 2007. Um, so I won the Scottish Heat, but didn't win the overall thing, unfortunately. Um, that was my wee pose for my getting nominated. Um, very staged. Um, but I had that business for five years, um, and it was all about kind of trying to the power of that data and, and the company, sorry, where I was going was in 2010 actually sold the business to Procter & Gamble. But Procter & Gamble bought the company because of the data. Um, by the time I had the business sold in 2010, um, I had about 30,000 email addresses on my list, which if you think about it, it's a hot buyers list. It was all selling shaving products. So these were people who just wanted to buy shaving. So Procter & Gamble saw real value in that data. And that was why it was very important to them. But in terms of actually how it was kind of worked for me, um, it, back in, I don't know if you remember back in kind of 2007 email, there wasn't very many email platforms, but I had, two th I had in the year 2007 I actually had about 3,000, 4,000 emails by this point and I actually sent an email, I was wanting to send an email to these people to actually get them to come back into the shop, I had 3,000 email addresses. But the till system I was using in the shop, which I can't show you the picture because I can't go back to the mouse, um, captured him. I don't actually can't even see the till system. Um, it was a very advanced till system. I still remember this day spending about six thousand pounds on this till system um, because it would capture data and I could send email campaigns from it. The one problem the, the supplier didn't tell me, however, was that the emails that we get sent from them were horrendous. They looked terrible. Um, so I had 3,000 3, emails, and I was like, well, how am I going to send this campaign out? I had the bright spark idea one night, though, that, well, I can't export the emails. It was one of these systems they didn't tell me in those days that you couldn't export the emails. You had to send the emails within the system. So instead, what I did was I, it was meant to be, I thought it would take a couple of hours, I literally one by one cut and pasted every single email from my database into, at that time it was ntlworld.com, which was Virgin Media, I think, eventually. Um, <coughs> And I sent out an email, I found, a, I found a designer who designed a basic email, pasted it into ntlworld.com and sent out these, kind of, I think it was three or four, uh, maybe up to 5,000 emails. Literally, when I woke up the next morning, it was still sending, it was that slow, <laughs> sending from ntlworld.com, very, very slow. Um, but in terms of power of loyalty, why I'm talking about that is because the offer was something like, it was segmented to people who hadn't bought, I think, in the last 30 days. So there was, there was an offer where they would spend £30, <coughs> come back in and they'll get 10% off. Now, 
the big thing for me was over the next couple of weeks when the law firm was live, that's when I started to see a flood of people coming back in again. As again, those days they were all literally walking in with printouts because it was just the only way I asked them to redeem the offer. There was no digital aspect there, no smartphones. It was you had to bring, they had to literally print out the thing and bring it in and show me so they would segment the offer. But for me, that's the big thing in terms of the power of data, and that's kind of how, whenever my business wanted to get a boost in traffic, clear stock out, increase revenue, I would literally, I wouldn't cut and paste 3,000 odd emails again, I kept that as a saved audience and just added to it. Um, but we would just send out offers continually once every month, and we would see a great return on that. And that's, again, in that time, that was how we seen the power of data, and it worked very well for us. And as I said, back in, 2010, we sold the business, and that data was very valuable for Procter and Gamble. Um, I've just realised I had a funny gif as well. <laughs> <In disaster. laughs> um, that was me sending emails out literally to everyone in the audience. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you, trust me, there's a few more gifs to come. Um, so, bringing me back to where I am just now. So, I'm head of marketing for Swipey. I don't know if the audience is so a Glasgow company. So, does anybody know Swipey? Heads up. That's good, that's not bad. Um, so Swipey is a, it's a digital loyalty and marketing platform specifically aimed for small brick and mortar shops. Um, what I mean by that is your coffee shops, juice bars, teas, hairdressers, barbers, beauty salons. It's in some of the schools as well. Um, the business is going great. I mean, it's a simple product. I don't know if you've, if you've used it, obviously. It's a very, very simple product. Is that my computer? Ding it off. Uh, it's a very, very simple product in that if you've never used it before, there's some cards here. So someone will literally come into the business, pick up a small swipey card or they download the app, scan it on the iPad, enter their email address and that's it done. So the, the, the business can actually capture data within about 12 seconds maximum. Is that, can I turn it off? Um, so, sorry, that's not me being cheeky, that was me saying it was my computer turning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know, send it. <laughs> Do you know, the irony is actually that's the chat bot going off, that's actually what that is. Um, so, yeah, Swipey, so it works really well for small brick and mortar companies because most of these companies, like hairdressers, beauty salons, they're very time poor, they're, they're very, they're kind of one man band type shops. They've getting, they're not, they're good with tech, but they're not. They don't have the patience for it. They don't want to start getting involved with complicated tech systems, um, and that's kind of how it works very well. It's very simple. They can't afford digital loyalty schemes either. Things that our system does what kind of Starbucks would do for them, and it works very well. And it's quite simple. We've got nice. We get our we um, kind of what Joanna said in terms of kind of user generated content. We always ask them to take, because the small, the small community or the kind of local community do like to, we try and, our kind of message at Swipey is kind of try and beat the long, beat, we'll give you the power of a Starbucks, but for a small price type thing. Where, so we try and make sure businesses are seeing this long live local type message and it builds a community. And as I said, we get all these kind of images as well, which is great for us from in terms of uh, user generated content. We don't have to do anything. We... In the last 18 months, since I've been over the company, we have we've grown from about 200,000 cardholders to just over a million. So I mean, that's a big number, um, a huge number. And we have now over 3,000 businesses. I think 18 months ago we had four or 500. So we've grown to 3,000 businesses, and it's grown very fast. And in 2016, 2017, we were the winners of the Best Customer Loyalty CRM and Personalization Award, which was great because we managed to beat like, so BA, Tesco Club Card, and Nectar to that award. So it was a good award for us. But anyway, that's enough about me. <laughs> we, I want to kind of bring it back up to date then. Um, we definitely live in a loyalty economy. That's, that is a fact. Um, there's other economies out there, like the subscription economy, Netflix, and other, but we definitely live in what I would call a loyalty economy. There's been a huge shift over the last 20 years from what I would call one-off <coughs> transactions to long-term relationships. And what I mean by that is 20 years ago, before digital, people would cut out coupons, you would get a discount, take it to the shop, and you would redeem it. 
Then going back maybe four or five years ago, daily deal sites were very popular. Um, however, for me, daily deal sites just drive one-off transactions to businesses, and it's up there kind of left hanging. It's just left for the business to deal with it. Whereas now, people are looking for loyalty. They want to build long-term relationships with their customers, um, and that's not just one-off transactions. Kind of like Joanna said, consumers really do have improved expectations nowadays, and no matter what demographic, I know people talk about millennials, etc., but no matter what demographic, consumers really do have improved expectations. And they want better experiences and they want to be recognised. They don't want to be seen as just this kind of number. So when people are communicating with them, they're not just a number. They want to be recognised. So, before I continue, oh, I'm disconnected. Oh. It's got my mouse. Yeah, it's moved. Yeah. Mac. Gif. Okay. <laughs> um, so just some some stats before I go on. Ninety-five percent. I just want you to take care of these are the good stats. Ninety-five uh, percent of customers want to be actively courted by brands. That came from Brand Quarterly. 83% of loyalty program members continue buying from brands because of awards, rare rewards. And 76% of shoppers believe that loyalty program members are part of their relationships with businesses. Um, again, go back to the, talking about relationships, not just one-off transactions. But wait, another gift. Um, hopefully you'll not get sick of the gift, there's a few more to come. Um, and there's all Jim, Jim Carrey related. Um, but some things just to note though, 55% um, of millennials think companies, retailers and brands that don't communicate through digital or mobile channels are outdated. And digital and mobile, I've only underlined them because I know that was spoken about last night and I could probably have a full talk on uh, mobile loyalty but I'll, I'll save that for any questions. 85% um, of loyalty program members haven't heard from a company since they signed up. And these three stats already come from Brand Quarterly altogether. And only 19% of customers actually think that independent retailers send them special offers to bring them back again um, after for first visit, which I think the bottom one is actually quite shocking. So. so, what do the stats actually tell me? They tell me personally that loyalty is all about building relationships. Um, it cements that relationship with your customers and what way you want to do it. As I said, I'll go through a couple of examples, but loyalty really does is the lifeblood of your business and it cements that relationship. There's so many stats bandied about, but the main one I'd, I'd take note here is that 80% of most companies' revenue does genuinely come from 20% of their customers. That, I know you hear that a lot, the 80-20, but that is actually a fact. So, moving on quickly, I'm going to, the first one's quite a quick one, the need for customer data, how to collect customer data using digital channels and why it's the lifeblood of your business for boosting customer loyalty. Ultimately, I'm not good with these. <laughs> Ultimately, um, if you don't capture customer data, there is actually no loyalty, that that's the period, there is nothing. Um, it all starts with data collection, it has to start with data collection, <laughs> and it's the heart of any successful loyalty program. Um, I don't I always ask the, the companies we're dealing with, what's your, the, the salespeople in our swipey office will say, what's your plan to reach customers once they walk out the door? And the bottom line is actually 50%, this is online and offline, 50% of customers who shop with your business, and I mean when I say shop, they actually buy something, uh, will never return again. Again, that to me, I always say to the companies, every time you don't capture data and someone's walking out the door, just picture pound signs above their heads so you're not capturing data. That's actually lost revenue and that's the way we try and kind of get it across to them. Because um, they think, a lot of the companies we speak to will tell us they think their customers are loyal. Oh, we know Sally, she came back again, but what happened to John and Billy? They just remember the ones that actually do come back. They actually forget about the, all the other ones, the conveniently. But the main way to capture data, there is no... I said secrets earlier on, it's not really a secret, but incentivizing, you have to, you actually have to incentivize people to buy. Customers nowadays are actually very smart, as I'm sure you all are, but they want something in exchange for their email, they're not just going to give you their email address or their phone number unless they're getting something actually in return for that. And we always try and tell the companies don't think of the first transaction, actually think of lifetime value. So. 
you can walk into a lot of coffee shops who do it well and they will talk about we'll give you a free coffee if you download our app or if you sign up to our thing which to me is ideal and that's the way it should be but people are always scared oh I don't want to give away a coffee or I'm only going to give away 5% off but they need, to give, they need to think bigger than that if they actually want to get the customer's data, it's very, especially in an offline world. Online, giving email addresses is quite straightforward, but in an offline world you really do need to incentivise. Ultimately, as I said, we said to some of the beauty salons we deal with that, they are, apart from that customer, one, one relationship is a bit of a commodity, the beauty salon. People will get emails in from Groupon or daily deal sites and they will switch, and that's a risk, in my opinion, to the business. Here's some of the ones that you've probably seen before in terms of who who have done loyalty for a long term, a long term now, sorry. Um, and the reason they do it is purely because they understand the value of the customer's data. Um, as you'll see in a minute, with actually having that data, they can do so much more in terms of um, in data insights and actually do lots of segmentation, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Just to round off the first section then, in an offline world, it really just comes down to staff. We talk about the staff, staff training, making sure when every time a customer comes in, they're actually saying there's some kind of offer in terms of value to get their email address, not just can, do you want to, do you want to just, We see it sometimes when we do our own tests that people just go, do you want to sign up to Swipey? Why? We need some kind of value and you need to have them trained up to do that. In an online world, capturing data is pretty straightforward. Um, I'll show you this one later on, but this is just like using um, chatbot technology to capture data. Um, we've got website bots, I'll show you them all in a minute. Um, there's lots of different ways to do it. I mean, MailChimp will love that for capturing data. And the one in the middle, just to clarify, a lot of this data and segmentation has to happen through using a CRM, a customer relationship management tool. HubSpot's free, so you can get a free CRM, capture data, store data, tag data, do everything you want with it. And kind of Joanna said it as well, and I did say Gary would talk about GDPR, but this presentation would, would last an eternity. Um, I've spent a lot of money, unfortunately, on Swipey on solicitors dealing with this, um, capturing data. I thought just because Mark Zuckerberg was in the news the last couple of days, this would make the point quite clear. Um, they are clearly saying, if we can't protect you, we don't, we don't deserve to, uh, we don't deserve to serve you. Um, GDPR, as Joanna said, is the General Data Protection Regulation Act. I think it's May the 25th, I think it kicks in. Don't ignore it. Um, if you are collecting data on your site or in the shop, at Swipey, for example, we have three. And now when someone wants to give us an email address, we need to capture three tick boxes. One for user T's and C's, a privacy policy, and we now need to get a consent to marketing. And if we want to email them, SMS them, push notifications, we need to get a tick box for each. It is very, very strict. Don't want to scare you, but genuinely make sure you've got your policies in place when it comes to uh, GDPR. So, number two. Um, so hopefully I've looked at data collection. Data collection is pretty straightforward, um, hopefully for most companies, and you can understand why having that data is important. However, monetizing the data, this is probably the more interesting part, the sexy part, that's how you actually make the money. Um, one message just to get over my point about segmentation and personalization. I don't want to, don't want to use the word shit, but I'm going to say it. Um, <laughs> a shit hot message or offer to the wrong audience will get a poor response. That's just the bottom line. However, a, <laughs> a shit hot message, even a crap message, um, an offer to the right audience will get you excellent response rates. And you'll see that as I go through the, just from a theme. It's very, very important you do have the segmentation right. Segmentation, just to keep it very simple, just to state the, state the obvious, is just involving splitting your customers into different groups. And going back to my HubSpot example, CRMs will and should be able to tag customers based on their behaviour or what they've done. So, for example, you should be able to, if you want to go to advanced this capture, things like age, the sex, recency, recency of purchase, when did they last buy, uh, what pro and things like products, so what products actually have they bought. And you should be able to then take that data and actually segment it. MailChimp, as I said, is a great tool. You can actually watch a couple of their own videos where they actually talk about it, uh, how they can help you capture data and segment it and use it. They've got lots of good case studies. Just because I'm moving this mouse of it. If you've ever been, I don't know if any of you use MailChimp, but actually if you get into MailChimp or any good CRM system, 
it'll let you, for example, segment people. You'll see pre-built over there, for example, new subscribers, active subscribers, and active age, female, or you can create your own at the top. So you can actually do anything well, when someone segments your data. You can do a lot of different things with it. And ultimately, before I get into personalization, this is why segmentation, there's no point in sending a personalized message if the segment's wrong, it'll just go completely wrong. So personalization. Um, personalization is just so important. It actually takes the data and the insights that you've actually captured and actually uses them now correctly. Now, personalization, I know that's a bit of a cheesy one, actually I was going to delete this slide, but um, <laughs> let's go on again. So Technically, personalization, if you read any decent definition, um, actually is meant to just move you away from pain, but actually to pleasure. Okay? <laughs> it's meant to make you smile, personalization. So when you get something in the mail, or you get something online, or you log into Netflix, it should actually make you smile, feel important, and actually valued. It shouldn't just be just random. And it's actually pretty straightforward to do personalization. Well, <coughs> it's easier to do personalization than change this. That's how you do it. <laughs> You know I'm broken. Um, personalization is pretty straightforward to do, as I'll show you in a second. And I'll sh I will, because I don't know you'd make up of the audience, show you some brand, bigger brands, examples of how to do that. But these are just cheesy examples of where personalization can go right. It, you might think, why is this a bad example? But actually, I don't know if anybody's done the theme rides where you come off the ride at the end and you're all happy and you, you buy the product. It's hard not to pay for it. I mean, it does make you smile. It's a personalization of your memory. And it's something, I mean, I, my kids would make me feel guilty, but I don't know about you, but that's a, a very hard thing not to buy. There is, however, some bad examples of where personalization has gone wrong. I don't know if you've heard of this one uh, from Target before. Um, it's from 2012, I think. How Target figured out a teen girl was pregnant before her father did. Um, quite simply, the teen, cutting along so short, the teenage where was buying products on Target which is just a big supermarket type chain. Um, she was buying baby related items and based off that data, she was clearly getting messages. Um, email, a postal offer sent to her to buy cribs, um, nappies and all sorts of things. And unfortunately her dad saw this um, and the dad was first of all irate with Target. <laughs> um, he, he's clearly on the phone or whatever he was doing in 2012 saying why are you sending my high school teenage daughter messages on uh, cribs and all sorts. But it turned out actually she was pregnant, so Target, as the headline said there, found out she was pregnant before um, he did um, because they were tracking her buying behaviour and they segmented her and they personalised <coughs> it. So it's just a quick example how where, where things actually can go wrong. A couple of my other favourites, and I'm being sarcastic when it comes to personalisation, is Living Social, um, or Groupon, sorry if I'm down here watch with Groupon, or Living Social. Um, I mean, the, for me these ads are horrendous, these emails are horrendous in terms of personalisation. Apart from saying my name and saying deals for Robert, I've got no interest whatsoever. I will not scroll through any of them, and I will just blatantly ignore them. Um, they've not segmented me, they've got no, I've not bought any of these items, I've got no interest in them whatsoever. And there's Jim Carrey again. That's, that is literally me. Well, actually, I just archive him. Um, so who's getting personalization right uh, and loyalty right in the digital age? And how can you try? I'm going to try and give you some examples so you can translate it into your business. Or just even give you some food for thought. Take Starbucks, for example. Um, they can have this order ahead facility where, come back to making you smile and make, solving a problem, they, personal, they make the experience, you can actually open the app, order your coffee, I don't know if anybody uses it, but you can order it and literally go and collect it. And there's no queue, no hassle. I'm very happy, I've walked in, I beat the queue, and I walk out happy. They personalise the cup, they shout your name, and the whole thing for me is all about, but they build the brand loyalty, they make the experience great, and I know Joanna talked about customer experiences earlier, and it's just a great customer experience for me. Um, another one. Netflix, um, everything with Netflix is personalised, so the emails that you actually get are personalised to you based on your behaviour, they're not just random. Um, the app notifications, if you've got the app, will actually notify you're all, all unique to your business. Once you log into Netflix, everything is personalised, so whatever the heading, usually now there's like a big header graphic, that's based on your, by your viewing behaviour, and even the rows are sorted based on what your past actions are. 
ASOS are actually pre-segmenting you, they actually want you to segment yourself, so you'll see at the bottom there, like discounts and sales, new stuff, your exclusives, you can actually opt in or out, and that's a great way just to keep you right. Other brands that are doing it well, clearly I'm putting Swipey up there, I'll show you how we do it in a second, um, but Tesco Club Card, they've been doing this for years, a bit like Target, so I'm sure there's a few mistakes, but Tesco Club Card are doing this very, very well. Boots Advantage Card, they've got the apps, they've got points, um, you can re preload um, points onto your app, walk in and you just spend with your card and it automatically gives you the offer. Uh, Amazon Prime, I'm going to talk about them in a second in terms of community. Um, so at Swipey, we're not going to win any design awards, so I'm just going to show you actually you can do this quite, quite simply. We send out emails that are very well segmented and personalised based on past action. That's actually all we do, but we do it very well. Um, we will segment people based on they've not shopped recently, they've not been in the shop, because what happens is with your eSwipey card, when you go in and you scan the iPad, we track your, track your visits. We know when you've been in, when you haven't been in, so on and so forth. So we'll segment you, so some people who are in every day will get a different offer to those who have not been in in a while. So as far as I remember, this one was a 5% discount to people, to swipey customers who hadn't been in, I think, in 60 days. Um, you'll see very simply, it's a small audience, so it was only 199 emails, but we had a huge open rate of 49. Redemption it was 40, and the revenue gen generated was 19.50. If you think about it, we only charge the businesses somewhere between 50 and 70 pounds a month, so over a year, say 800 pounds maximum, so they've straight, they can do this twice a month with us, so we've got account managers who segment the data and do it all for them, so they're not doing anything. Um, yeah. Just another basic example, Humus Brothers down in London, um, 2,866 emails, 30% open rate, 28 redemption, and again just from one campaign they generated 1175, which again for small businesses paying 50 to 70 pounds a month is exactly what you want, you want them to, that's X amount of ROI, I'm not even going to try and work it out. But there's one more, <laughs> <coughs> and unfortunately I think I've had it all stolen from me, <laughs> Joanna stole it. Um, join the community. Um, community is a great way with digital loyalty at the moment in terms of how to actually build your own community. Um, a lot of people will actually say, oh god the mouse again. I'm not going to read that out, but most people will actually say that community is kind of like the new brand, that's a new way to build your brand, <laughs> having, face, having, your, having like your own Facebook group. And there's so many things you can do with a Facebook group um, in terms of building the loyalty. Um, it's free, which is a great start. Um, but what we've done, we've got one at Swipey, where we don't call it the Swipey Facebook group, it's actually called the Loyalty Economy Group, and what we do is we invite our own customers into it, but we also invite prospects into it, and a different mix, and they kind of run the group themselves. We obviously chime in from time to time. And that kind of works really well for us. They become their own advocates, themselves, their own customers. They'll talk about the examples you saw in the emails there. They will actually tell all the good news about Swipey. So they're using that community in the right way. We're there just to police it, just to make sure nobody's do, uh, doing anything naughty. And kind of, it's almost like going back to you guys, the saying kind of what's your unique experience? How can you build brand loyalty using all these kind of different, um, different channels? So the bit which could go badly wrong, if I've got time. I want to quite, just quickly show you um, chatbots, how actually you can get started with these very, very quickly, um, and it doesn't cost a penny. There literally is bots everywhere. Um, most companies now are investing in messenger bots or bots that can automate things. Just one note though, just, it doesn't replace humans, it's just a way of filtering out people. Um, it's a way of getting to the kind of crux of the matter very quickly, and then a lot of people will jump into the conversation. That's the case with Swipey. We just use them to filter traffic out so we end up spending our time wisely speaking to the people who we want to be speaking to. At, Swipe, at Swipey we've got a website bot, uh, we've got a messenger bot, and they work really well for us. We want to generate leads. They work really, really well. I'm going to quickly just focus on the messenger <coughs> bot. Why Facebook Messenger? I'm not going to go into too much detail, but they've got 1.3 billion users. And just some key points here, they've got 70 million daily users, 2 billion messages, and this is the big thing for me, for businesses. There's 2 billion messages sent per month um, between businesses and the users. And this is where I'm going to do the demo, hopefully. So give me one second. This should take a few minutes then, that's us. Okay. Yep. So, so we use a, don't, 
this is a test page, as you probably see, there's no graphic on there as a header, so it's, pretty, it's a bit of a test page. Um, but after the event, if you want, you could go to facebook.com forward slash Robert Gillespie 74, and you can get a copy of the slides, for example, I'll show you how to get that if you wanted the copy of them. Um, but what you'll see here, oh, let me go to the paste. So, this is my Facebook page, the one that I showed you there, this is the live version of it. Facebook bots can actually do the three things I want to tell you about, so they, I've already spoken about, sorry, they'll actually show you how to collect data automatically, they'll actually do the segmentation for you, and they actually will follow up for you as well, helping you build loyalty, so I'll just show you just very quickly one way we do it, to actually collect data, we use a tool called uh, ManyChat um, to do it, and I'm going to give you a link at the very end. There's actually a free 10 part course, many chat I've done, that's nothing to do with us. It's free, it takes about five or six hours to go through it, but you can do, go through the full course and learn how to do it yourself. I'll just show you a quick way how we capture data. So, for example, if we put up a post on our Facebook page, we can ask someone very simply to comment below. So, you can see just as this is a mock up, obviously, um, we can say comment below with the word slides. So if I type in the word slides, and if this works, trust me, this actually didn't work last night. <laughs> so I was bricking it. <laughs> so what should happen, and this is where a few seconds will feel like probably an eternity, as long as I'm, connect as long as I'm connected to the internet. So it does usually take five or ten seconds. There we go. Thank God for that. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see that. But you'll, so what you'll see there is it says, I can't even read it myself, Hi Robert, um, and again most people will get this on a mobile device, it'll look bigger and nicer. Um, Hi Robert, to confirm you want to get instant access to the slides from our working digital presentation, just type loyalty below, PS if you ever want to unsubscribe. And literally all I would do is type loyalty in the chat bot, and you see it responds quite quickly, here you go, you can access the slides, get the slides. Now straight away that's done two things, one, it's captured your data, have you probably noticed the first message said, hi Robert, so it knows my Facebook, it's pulled that straight in, you can customise all that, um, so it's captured the data quite quickly, and it's all personalised from here, the reason why you have to type loyalty in, is actually to subscribe, that's you actually subscribing to Facebook's Messenger's Terms of Service, it's just a sneaky way of getting you to get me another <coughs> subscribe by giving us a keyword, but that's you got the slides now, um, very quickly, I'm not, this will literally take two seconds, all we're doing here is in, face, in ManyChat there's what's called growth tools and if this loads, it's loading, let's reload the page in case it's frozen. Oh sorry, I'm pressing the wrong button. Oh, now, I was glad that did that. you notice that this message has just appeared. I've set this up, because what you can do is automate a lot of this, so it'll actually I set a, a message to send to me one minute after I subscribed. And it's just an example, you can tailor that to whatever you want. But this one just says, hey Rob, I'm just showing the power of automated loyalty, how could you use this feature? So it's just asking you how could you use that feature, whether it's sharing blog content, asking people to subscribe to offers, there's numerous ways that you can actually do that. And I'm just going to quickly show you how it's done very quickly. Don't ever be scared about getting this set up, you literally will go into a settings page, get a tiny wee bit of code, and you'll install it on your website. If you don't know how to do it, go to a place called fiverr.com, I don't know if you've been there before, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, you can get tasks done for five dollars, <coughs> and someone will do that for you, very, very simple. You would go, to, and I'm just going to quickly show you, if you go to a new growth tool, what this does is it shows you all the different ways <coughs> that Facebook Messenger can capture data for you, so pop-ups, landing pages, you name it, it does a whole raft of different things. And the last couple of things, and as you'll see here, the way I set up that example for you guys was this post, and literally all we did was what keywords would actually trigger in within the post, and what messages we get afterwards, and that is it. And then when someone puts the keyword in loyalty, you can see keywords here, you can just set up any keyword you want and what messages, so when someone types in message loyalty, they'll get this message here as you saw a minute ago, and the very last thing, when someone does type in the keyword loyalty, we've got two actions set up, 
So you can see add tag slides requested. So now I know that they've add, they've done something. So in the future I can send personalised messages based on that tag. So if someone puts in loyalty or whatever you want it to be, you can tag them automatically, and then you can, you can do whatever you want with them. With Swipey, for example, we've got a tag that says they're a brick and mortar shop because we do identify them at some point. We ask them if they're a card holder, and if they're someone who's not using Swipey but are a brick and mortar, and we can then personalise the messages depending on that. And that's it, and you can probably see subscribe to Squeak Sequence, work in digital test sequence. That just means that after one minute of doing the first step, you saw that second message through one minute later on. Um, that is it. That's for me.